San Antonio, Tex-Mex food is very different from the rest of the world. There's so many cultures that came to the table here many hundreds of years ago, and this is what created our cuisine. Number double zero, puffy tacos. And you think that the puffy taco is the most representative taco in San Antonio? I really do think so. Not everybody serves it, but everybody knows about it. Puffy taco is very integral to the Tex-Mex story. Para mira, hay quienes toman de lunch puffy tacos, y hay quienes lo buscan en el dinner. San Antonio is the home of the puffy taco. It's a little bit of heaven on a plate. The puffy taco is made by frying a flattened bowl of masa. It is not a hard shell taco, but it is not a regular taco either. There are a lot of stories about its invention, but we know that it starts here in San Antonio, and there is no dish more representative of the city. So you remember when you ate your first puffy taco? It was right here. In this place? In this place. Taco house. Taco house. Made by your mother. More than likely, yes, and her staff. My mother started in August 1992. This was just a taco house, and she wanted to turn it into something a little bit more. It is kind of an art. In order to have the best masa for the puffy taco, uh -huh. the masada that we're going to make is going to be a little more dense uh -huh. than we do for the corn tortillas. Why? There's a magical mix of water to cornmeal ratio. When you put it into the fryer, if it's too thin or too aguada, it, it, it'll, it'll, it'll explode. You see now how it's smooth, uh -huh. but it's still thick. It looks like, nice, nice. like an ice cream texture, no? Something like that. Exactly. Why do you think the puffy taco is so unique? Well, not only is it crunchy, but it's also soft uh -huh. and fluffy. It's sweet and it's also a bit savory because the corn releases the sugars as it's cooking. Uh -huh. Just then the word puffy, the, the uh -huh. corn masa puffs up as it's cooking. It's a beautiful taco. I would say it's an elevated taco. Yes. Yeah. We're going to roll out pelotas. The big balls. Big huh? balls. And it's because my mom was a very proud person. You know, we, we're all proud Texans and that we pride ourselves on everything big. I can't say that we invented it, but we sure make them big here. That's all. <laughs> nice. <laughs> you see how it's bigger than my hand? Yes. Don't press it too hard. No. But, but just right. right. A little bit harder, I can already tell. I have a little hand, so. Oh, okay. <laughs> you can't yes. enjoy a puffy taco uh -huh. unless it's prepared right there in front of you, so it's an immediate satisfaction. What a lot of people tell us is, it, this tastes like my grandmother's cooking, uh -huh. and that's what we intended. It looks puffy. I can already tell. Ahorita me cuentas eso de las salguitas. están bien formados en esto. Y bien bronceadas, ¿no? Para que sepa rico. Do you think that the puffy tacos are representative of San Antonio? Absolutely. Hands down, San Antonio. Yeah. It is a San Antonio staple. I think it was popular in the late 80s going into the 90s. There's a lot of stories that went around where it kind of migrated from California and this, that, and the family was here. But, but we've made the puffy taco renowned for you know everyone to come and enjoy yes. one. So the food that you are making here is more Tex-Mex? Tex-Mex. That's right. San Antonio is kind of a hub for <laughs> a yes, lot no, of... For Latinos? Yes. yes. Uh, how, can, how can you describe that Tex-Mex food? A lot of it has a little bit to do with the cowboys and los mexicanos que estaban aquí. It's a mix of tortillas, beans. Very also. much the combination of the items on the plate or in the taco. Make it yes. Tex-Mex. I welcome everybody in the world to come to San Antonio and enjoy a puffy taco. Yes. yes. So everybody's uh -huh. got to try it at least Excited once. Excited to try my first puffy taco. Yes. <laughs> I Whoa. have one lengua, one chicken puffy taco, rice and beans. Texan style. Yes. Very big, Hopefully no? Hopefully you can finish it all. <laughs> Hopefully. I will try. Mm. Que la carne está bien suavecita, pero tienen también la tortilla bien crispy. Hola, jefe Judith. Se cuentan varias leyendas, ¿no? Aquí del puffy taco. Cada quien dice su historia diferente, pero... I think it's important to make a mention that wherever you go, you'll find a puffy taco. Of course. Hi. Hello. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, Francisco. I'm Paco. 
Paco. Paco. I'm, Francisco, how are you, man? I'm Steven. Pleasure. Hi, Steven. Nice to meet you. Pleasure to meet you. Thank you for having us. So, Nixtamal is the ancient process that the Aztecs came up with by using calcium carbonate, or cow, uh -huh. uh -huh. and they use the, the cow and cook the corn. Then what we do is we cook this corn and it sits overnight and rests. Uh -huh. And then we washed it and now we're gonna grind it. It just feels good to be able to continue that legacy in that process. Yes, and using corn, not using like exactly. flour, no? Flour no, masa. No, nothing out of a bag around here. Yes, man. <laughs> That's good. And this Molino? My great uncle Frank uh -huh. uh, invented and manufactured this machine in 1932. And my father opened up a restaurant in 1957 called the Taco Hut. And this was in the Taco Hut for 40 years and it was used every day. Wow. Yeah. And we bought it here and been making masa ever since. Nice, man. It's a, a family uh, relic, you know? It's a lot of legacy, yeah. <laughs> My grandmother bought this recipe up with her from Mexico. So probably your great mother started the Puffy Tacos in San Antonio? That I'm not sure of. Some people will argue with that, but I think the chronology of events speak for themselves. Puffy Taco time. It's a very unique flavor profile mm. here. That Tex-Mex profile is San Antonio. I mean, it is the home of Tex-Mex food, in my opinion. And I think our family is a big a big part of that tradition. You ready to roll with this? I just, I just winged this, so, you know, we'll get as happy as we want with this. <laughs> <laughs> okay, right. so how are we gonna make it? Let's start with some fresh squeezed watermelon juice, fresh lime juice. We're gonna put a little jalapeno infused simple syrup, ginger juice, and now the delicious tequila. In Mexico, when we put the, everything in a jar, we call it el, el agua loca. Agua loca. El agua loca, <laughs> crazy water. Uh huh. All right. Yes. Man, thank you for having us. Thank you for being here. Familia de renombre y con buena historia sobre sus puffy tacos. Uh -huh. Los barrios. Ellos nunca han dicho nosotros lo inventamos, pero tienen un buen sabor. Buen tamaño, famosos sus tacos. This is not something that my family invented. Uh -huh. We just perfected them. <laughs> you have four restaurants in San Antonio, no? very famous here. And you know, on, in the four of them, you serve puffy tacos. These amazing puffy tacos are really good. So tell me, how did your mother start? Well, in 1972, when I was nine, my mother asked my father to buy her a little restaurant. And so he did. It was very small, and this is where she learned to make the puffy tacos. So now, Diana, you are showing me how to make a tortilla for a puffy taco. Yes. And we add a little bit of our secret ingredient. Okay, I, I won't <laughs> ask what that secret ingredient is. We just season it, add a little bit of water. Uh-huh. Los Mexicanos, we don't know, no? Like, we think that the Tex-Mex food is not good because, you know, it's like we think that it's a copy of Mexico, but no, like it's different. You are trying to do your own thing. What you have to remember is that this part of Texas was a part of Mexico before. Uh -huh. So there's the foundation. That's why our food is so wonderful. <laughs> That's como se ah, it's, it's beautiful. Rápido, uh -huh. It's beautiful. And now I turn it. And now you flip it, yes. Okay. We're going to let the Just bottom side flips. cook, and then you make the indention. For how long you have been making puffy tacos? Well, since I was nine years old, we started making puffy tacos in the restaurant that my mother owned. Nice. Since I was nine. And since I'm only 29, well, you know, do the math. <laughs> <laughs> my mother had a very big heart. It's just how she expressed her love for people was through her food. Do you think that the food that you make in your restaurant is Tex-Mex or you say that is you try to, to do it like Mexico. It's a little bit of both. So we have our official Mexican recipes that my mother made, uh -huh. and then we have the Tex-Mex recipes, which in San Antonio, Tex-Mex food is very different from yes. the rest of the world. Yes, yes, yes. And it is very good. And then you leave San Antonio and it's very hard to, to have, find. to find it. They cannot recreate it. And I don't know what it is. I think it's just the, the soul of San Antonio. I think it's the sazon, but it, but it's something very special. There was a lot of cultures that contributed to the food that we eat today. 
the Spanish, the French, the Native Americans, the Germans, the Mexicanos, all those influences brought something different to the table. And I sure am glad that they did. It's a beautiful story and it's even more beautiful when you taste it. Para todos los tacos. Y para todos los tacos también. <laughs> <laughs>